Welcome to Boondoggle. This is the 2017 Marlowe 49E and I'm just going to walk you through the boat today like you were with me and show you the main features and functions of the boat. Come on aboard. Now we're in the cockpit of Boondoggle and this is a great entertaining area. There's room for two or three chairs out here so I could get six people out here for dinner. I can open this door locks open, this door locks open. So now I really have a really nice indoor-outdoor entertaining area on the boat. You'll also notice that this is covered here, um, so I'm, I've got sun protection and rain protection. Another added thing here is that these tubes here are not only support, but they're also, there's rain gutters up above that collect the water, and then the rainwater goes down this tube and then out near the water line. So it's really nice, nice protected area. Um, a lot of people put a sunshade back here for the Bahamas, but it's a really versatile boat for entertaining back here. Come on in the salon. In the salon, we've done two opposing settees. And the built-in furniture like this is really nice for cruising because all underneath these seats is storage. So if you want to store dry goods and beverages and things to be in the Bahamas for weeks at a time, this is a really great added space. Back here we have our, some of our main entertaining area stuff. So I've got a nice drink fridge here, 15 inch U-line refrigerator. And then these aft cabinets here, these aft cabinets here are designed to hold your beverage glasses and your wine glasses. And then on this side, we did a uh, little ice maker, great little ice maker. And again, more storage. And then up here, we have our television behind these teak camber doors. It's nice to be able to close that off. Lots of storage over here, so lots of room. You'll notice inside all of the cabinets in this boat is finished. So it's either Formica finish that's fully finished or a teak interior of every cabinet in the boat. Over here is great storage for glasses and things. These little cutouts can be modified to hold whatever size bottles or glasses you like. And your main electrical panels right here. I won't go into detail here, but from right here is where I switch over from shore power to generator power. Um, I start my generator from right here and I manage all of my 110 and 220 from right there. Come on up to the galley. So this yacht has no lower helm. Um, they spend a lot of time on the boat and they really wanted, might, wanted to maximize the living space. So we did an enclosed bridge up top, which means I really don't need a lower helm, which lets you build this nice big table. One of the main features of the Marlowe is this opening between these two levels. Because I haven't done a big upright fridge to block the view, this now feels like one larger space. And for the refrigeration and freezers, we've done the sub-zero drawers. And then we added a large five cubic foot freezer down below. There's really no reason for all of your long-term food to be in the galley. You just have to have access to it and be able to bring it up here. Um, come on around this way. I'll show you the features of the galley. So I've got great storage. Again, all the shelves are lined. All the shelves have fiddles. Typically, I see owners put their plates in this area. You'll notice that all of the shelves are on these little rubber O-rings. And that's to keep this shelf from vibrating annoyingly. She wanted a convection microwave and a small cooktop. Um, and it's great. And then we have a, a vent that really vents overboard. So when you're cooking, it's getting all the smells out of here. Uh, granite countertops. And this is uh, my trash is right here. 
So I throw my trash in here and then I change the can out from the front. Notice all the drawers in the Marlowe are um, dovetail drawers on ball bearing, stainless steel slides. In this case, it's a silverware drawer. We've built, we built a, a holder for all your knives. So it's a really great galley to work in. Uh, my wife told me when the galley's down and we're moving, she gets seasick a lot. But if she can see out while we're cruising uh, and working in the galley, it's much better for her. So if, if you have anyone in the family that gets seasick once in a while, I think you'll find the galley up is much better. Again, on a nice day, I can uh, really open this boat up. And it's beautiful today here. Um, so I've got a pilot house door here, another one on the other side. I've got the back open so I can get a lot of airflow through here. All right, let's go up to the command bridge. All right, so one of the very difficult decisions I think all boaters have is, should this area be totally open? Should it be totally closed or something in between? And I think part of this evaluation really needs to be talking about the times when you're not running the boat. It's real easy to say you want it open on a nice day. It's real easy to say you want protection on a crummy day. But also, what does that do to the rest of the boat? If most of us only boat 250 hours a year, and this boat's also functioning as my Florida home for six months of the year, then maybe the table downstairs is more important than the lower helm, even though I'd like to have this open some of the time. Um, so that's really the tough decision is, when the boats get larger like this, it's not all about the boating, it's about life on the boat as well. And all of these decisions need to be made to suit your lifestyle and how you're really gonna use the boat. I'll tell you that as people get more experienced and they get in larger boats and they just go. And when I mean they just go, they go out on days when it's not that nice. And when it's not a nice day and when it's windy and a little rough, but you're gonna go anyway, this enclosed bridge is perfect. Um, it's always a great day in here. I have glass windows with windshield wipers, with windshield washers. So I'm much more likely to go out uh, according to my schedule and according to my desired plan um, in this boat than if I had an open flybridge boat. Of course, you know, the plastic enclosures are good and they help, but I could never heat and cool the space as well as I can in here. Again, talking about that lifestyle on board, this owner also wanted this to kind of be his office. So, um, he had me build this little stool here and his laptop went right here and he's got a large monitor so he's got a great place to sit and work on the boat that's separate from all the other areas of the boat. Alright, come on out back. Alright, being an enclosed bridge, they really wanted to maximize the space out here. So they chose not to put a dinghy or davit up here and to build this permanent seating and table here and the view is definitely better up here and from right here I've got access to my electric wolf grill my sink and I have another uh, drink fridge and ice maker right here uh, underway I can close this I think it's safer to have this closed when underway but when you're washing the boat this is really nice you've got wet soapy feet you can uh, go up and down the stairs and wash the exterior of the boat from right here. Let me show you how I like to run this boat. Um, this is a wireless yacht controller and if you haven't used one of these yet it's um, really changed my life boating. I find that in this size range I can run this boat totally by myself. Don't mind leaving a marina by myself or I've even moved to 58 all the way from Lauderdale to here, stopping three different nights and um, really had no problem. And the key is that I have controls of both engines, both thrusters and the windlass, and I can wear it around my neck. 
But the way I like to use it in this boat is as a wing station like you see on a big ship. So if you watch the guys dock on a cruise ship or a freighter, come on out this way. If I was on a cruise ship, I'd be right here. So I'll just hold this with the bow pointed toward the bow and I can look down and you can see that I can see the bow pulpit and I can see the swim platform. All right, so Boondoggle um, downstairs was built with two large staterooms with two large heads. Um, in this model, the builder really chose to, instead of trying to pack three staterooms in and compromising them all, let's build two really nice staterooms for two couples. Come on below. We're going to start by looking at the master because I know that's what you're most interested in. But I want you to also notice this little area where I first come down the stairs. It's really nice because I've got a large port light right here, which again I can open up and put my screen out on a nice day like today. But I'm not in a dark, narrow hallway. Uh, it feels like a very open space. I've got great access to the second head. I know that if my wife and I were on this boat, she would tell me that the master, was her, master head was hers and I would be in here, and it's really convenient. So in the master here, we've done a large bed with a large closet. We built it a four chip because it actually uses the space better. But all the closets in the boat are cedar lined with a light. Again, oversized port lights that do have screens. Great chest of drawers here. This is really nice. I don't have to bend over and get to my socks and underwear from underneath the bed. I can get to things very easily here. Now that being said, I do have storage under the bed. And uh, most couples tell me they really like this for shoes. So this is a great locker for shoes. It's got a light so you can see what you're doing. All right. So here's another hanging locker. Again, cedar lined, light, easy to use. And then on each side, there's plenty of room for personal things. You've got blackout curtains there. This is also an interesting feature on this boat. The air conditioning comes out of these vents and goes out over you, so it's not blowing right on you. And it's a lot of volume, so it doesn't have to be a lot of pressure, so it's nice and quiet. TV mounted on the wall. You'll notice on this boat all the TVs are mounted in boxes like this. That's because of this construction technique. These walls are all built very light and strong, and we want to spread the load of mounting this TV out over a large area. It's a really nice look and you're not going to have problems with this falling off the wall like if you just used a mount like you would in your home. In this head we have a pocket door. It's a really great use of space. You can leave this open most of the, most of the time. And then in here we've got the toilet. Go on in. Let me open the shower for you. And everyone asks us to put a seat in the shower, so it's really nice to have a seat in there. We also did a really nice thing for a mirror in here. There's actually a full-length mirror on the back of this door, but for shaving and makeup, this was a really good solution. A nice big mirror. And then the big surprise in this model is this right here. It's kind of like your laundry room at home. So I come down here. I have a fire door here to the engine room, which deadens the sound. I have a door there so I can do my laundry here, full-size washer and dryer. And here's the freezer I mentioned when I was at the galley. 
So I don't need a ton of freezer space up in the galley because I've got lots of room here to load up for food for weeks at a time. And again, lots of storage. So another large hanging locker here. More storage here for your washer and dryer supplies. So this is a really nice setup for the owner. Let's go look at the guest stateroom. All right, so we're going back through the central hallway here. And then I see an entrance into this head, which, you know, if you have guests on board, this will become the day head. So they don't need to come into your stateroom. They can use this head. Very nice head. Now, when the, when the guests are using the stateroom, they can get into the head directly from the stateroom. So there's two ways into this head. And again, look at the shower. When we survey customers about what they want in a boat, you know, you want a big bed, you want a big closet, and you want a normal shower. All the fixtures here are Grow Infinity fixtures, lifetime warranty. That's a Swepper door latch set from Germany. Much nicer than the Perco stuff you normally see. Look how the hinges are all mortised on this boat. You can see how the hinges are really strong. That's never going to rip out. And then again, a nice, nice size bed here. I have uh, hanging lockers on both sides. Great storage. These shelves are really nice for your luggage. I typically see people coming on board with a, you know, small roll-on or a, hopefully a duffel bag, and that's a great, great spot to put it up there on the shelf. Um, that's not only a hatch that does ventilation; it's got the screen and the shade. It's also a good emergency escape hatch. Uh, should the need ever arise, you you would get out of there. Okay, um, there are two ways into this engine room. I can get in from the transom with a transom door, and that's what I would probably do when I'm already in the marina. But let's say it's morning and um, I've just gotten up and gotten my coffee and I just want to go do my engine room check and it's uh, rainy outside or it's cold outside. Um, what's really nice is I can walk right through the boat into the engine room. So now I'm passing back through my laundry area. I'm going to open this watertight door. And now I'm in the engine room. And I can almost stand up. I would call it a stand-up engine room. It's stuck a little bit, but very civilized in here. I can get all the way around both engines. I can get to my hot water heater. I can get my stabilizers. I can get to my glass sight tubes for my fuel level. I can get to my air conditioner chiller system. I can get to my twin generators. So as an owner-operator couple, this is perfect. Um, it's really nice to be able to just come in here, check things, do things without having to go outside. And um, I'm just much more likely to take care of this boat if it's easy to maintain. These engines are Cummins QSM 11s, which are 715 horsepower each. Um, so you tend to run this boat at nine knots or 17. It really likes 17. 17 is about 75% load with these motors. And, um, you know, you're getting about one mile a gallon when you're going slow. And I think you're burning about 50 gallons an hour in this boat doing 17 knots. So, of course, it takes fuel to go fast, but it's great to be able to go fast. When you have a day where you're trying to cover 100 miles and you don't want to run at night, um, this boat will let you do it. The twin generators, a lot of people ask, do I need two generators? Either of these generators will run everything on the boat. But of course, when one breaks and you only have one, you have no air conditioning. And in Florida, that means your trip's over. So we really recommend two generators when we're building the boats. I think that um, it's pretty important in the tropical environment. Maybe not as important for the New England boater. Although, if you do go to the Caribbean and things and you like to anchor out a lot, don't forget there's an oil change interval. You know, you're supposed to change these generator engine oil at, you know, 250 hours, depending on the manufacturer. And if you're running 24 hours a day, that's only 10 days. So if you want to not change oil for a month, 
you need two generators. Through here is more equipment. So my steering gear, my autopilot, all of that stuff is back here. Um, I don't want to go into that detail in this video, but it's good, good access to all the necessary running gear there. Um, these are my fuel filters for my generator. Generator. Um, that chamber over there is interesting. See the thing with the blue handle on it? That whole area is called a sea chest. And there's a screen on the outside of the hull that keeps the seagrass out. And that whole chamber fills up with water. And then the engine water, the generator water, all the stuff that needs water on the boat um, comes off of that and has its own through hull to close. So instead of having a whole bunch of holes in the boat with a whole bunch of little baskets, that's a giant strainer. And there's one on this side as well. And they're cross-connected. So you just need the diver to clean those screens once a month when he's cleaning your running gear in the bottom here in Florida. Up north, the users tell me they don't have to do it near as often. Um, notice this here. This is your main engine, engine exhaust coming out here. And then the cooling water cools the exhaust right there. And then it's going out the bottom of the boat. And then there's a little bypass tube going out the stern. So this is a very quiet boat. This makes it much quieter because you're not hearing the exhaust going directly out the back. Uh, it also keeps a lot of that diesel soot off the back of the boat. OK, this is called a sight tube. And I can open a valve, push this valve, and then I'm actually reading the level of the fuel in the tank. Of course there's an electronic sensor in this boat, but like all electronic sensors, they can fail or not be calibrated right. So this is a way to direct read the level of fuel in the tank. This right here is the top of the stabilizer. So the stabilizer system, the stabilizer system has an engine driven pump and that pump um, is regulated by a computer that talks to this and tells this fin when to move. Works very much like uh, ailerons on an airplane to keep an airplane level. Um, these fins are moving like this to keep the boat level. And this is a hydraulic cylinder here and it's pushing in and out which is making that fin turn left and right. Really reliable system. This system only works when the boat's moving. Um, there are systems available that work at rest, but I find most cruising couples, you're either in a marina or a calm anchorage, when you really need stabilization is when you're underway. And this does an excellent job at that. I think one of the great features of this boat are these really nice, high protected side decks. When it's not a nice day, this is much safer than a boat that just would have a rail that you could fall over. Uh, my wife has told me she really likes standing here and we'll run the bow line here and she can just put the loop over the piling from right here instead of being up there on the bow. So I'll just take the bow thruster with the yacht controller, take her to the pole, go to the other side, do the same thing, and then we'll clean it all up after we get in the slip. Up here, great storage. And you know, when these boats get bigger and the lines get heavier and they get wet, a dry, secure place to store these big heavy lines close to where you need them. You're not dragging them all over the boat. Up here on the foredeck, great working space again. Um, I have a 50 amp cable master here as well. So if I want to bow in or I happen to be on a wall with a pole right there, I've got an electric cable master that will let me pull that cable out and plug in at bow or stern, which is really versatile. I have fresh water wash down, salt water wash down right here. He's got his anchor snubber up here, so I can run the anchor from right here. And again, with that yacht controller, I can stand right here, back the boat up, let the chain out, use the thruster to keep it straight, and do everything all by myself. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this tour today. And if you found it informative, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And if you have any questions for me, just send questions right in the comments of the video or email me directly. The links are below. Thank you.